Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to show you a new way to get input from your user. So let's say you're writing a traditional Python program and you want to get the user's name. So you can say name equals input, enter your name. And this is how many, many people do. And then we can say print hello name. Well, if you have any Python experience, you might see two problems that crop up when I do it this way. So if I run it this way, you'll see that the E in name is squished up against where we're getting input from the user. And if we're not in Jupyter, if we're on the command line, then they are literally squished together that whatever I type will come immediately after that. So that's kind of bad, but okay, it actually prints the right thing. So, okay, so the, you know, the prompt looks a little weird. And I can fix that by saying enter your name colon space. And I just do this sort of automatically now. I actually had to think about not doing that here. So if I run it again, see there's a little bit of space there. I can breathe a little more. All is good. But there's a separate different problem. What if I'm a little tired and I kind of fall asleep at the keyboard and I enter here space, 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 Ruben, space, 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 space. Well, that is what is going to be printed here because the actual value of the name variable here is the string with all the spaces that I included. But that's okay. I have a good way to solve that problem as well. Because remember that the input function, the input built-in function returns a string. And on strings, I can call the strip method, which removes leading and trailing white space. So if I do this, it doesn't matter how many spaces I have before and after, they're all gonna be removed because input will return a string. Strip will then return a new string based on that string without the leading and trailing white space. And then that's what's assigned to name. And name indeed doesn't have any of that white space there. So that's pretty great. And so this is the way that I have been getting input from users for years already. However, I've recently started to use the Rich package. Rich is amazing. And most people know about Rich because it lets you create all this really nice output in the terminal. And I'm going to do some more videos about that too because it's just like mind-boggling what you can do with Rich. But what was amazing to me was what you can do with input with Rich. That it turns out that Rich solves a lot of these problems. So for example, I can say here from rich.prompt import prompt. And what that does is it imports the prompt class. And then I can say here, name equals prompt.ask, enter your name. Now notice what I'm doing here. I've gone back to, sort of back to my roots as it were. Hello, name. I did not use strip. I did not put it a colon. I did not put it in a space, but that's okay because prompt does all of those things. Enter your name, it asked me for my name. Hello, Ruben, that's good. And if I put in spaces, you know what happens? It ignores the spaces, it removes them as God intended, right? Okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit there, but basically this is what we would want. And it's so nice that prompt.ask does that for us. So far, so good, but it gets even better than that. I know, I know you're thinking, how could it be better than that? I'm gonna show you. What if I say name equals prompt.ask, enter your name. And then I can say default equals, let's say no name. That's right, now our input will have a default that the person just presses enter, that's the value that we'll get. We can say print, you know, hello name. Let's spell that right. And so now look what happens, it says enter your name and it shows what the default is. And if I just press enter, it says hello, no name, which is much better, I think, than the empty string, which is what we would have gotten before. But wait, it gets even better than that because, well, we can actually indicate what options we want to allow people to enter. So if I say here, I'm gonna use like you know, a, a, you know, a silly example, I'm gonna say name equals prompt.ask, who is your favorite beetle? Also demonstrating how incredibly old I am, right? And then I can pass it a list, I can say choices equals, and I can say John, Paul, George, and Ringo. And so now I say here, print, you know, hello, well, I like name too. So look what happens. It says, who's your favorite beetle? And it shows me the different options. And if I say, well, Ruben's my favorite beetle, it's going to say, no, 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 please select one of the available options. And then until I provide one of the options that's asking for, I don't know, let's go for George, right? Then it'll agree with me as it should. Um, and then it continues. Now, could you have done all this yourself? Of course you could have, but why work hard? So prompt.ask, a fantastic, fantastic replacement for the input built in. It does all sorts of stuff. Of course, it also includes the possibility of stylizing your text as Rich does for all sorts of other things, but I'll talk about that in another video. Meanwhile, what do you think of this? Have you ever used Rich before? What have you used it for? I wanna hear from you. 
Also, don't forget, you can catch me on Twitter. And of course, every week I produce another newsletter about Python and software engineering on my Better Developers list. Sign up at the URL I'm showing you here. I'll be back real soon. Thanks for watching.